types are the core feature that set TypeScript apart from JavaScript. In this video, we're going to learn the basic mechanics of the type system and how it can prevent certain categories of errors in your code. So here we have a variable thing to watch and we're assigning a string to it. And then we're assigning to statement another string which is created through taking this string, concatting our thing to watch, and then concatting today. And I know this is a slightly unusual way of doing that. I'll explain later why I use that method, and we'll learn something about the type system while we're there. But first, let's see this in action. So first, we should note that in order for this to work correctly, thing to watch should probably be a string and not an array or an object or something else. So let's go ahead and reassign this to an object. JavaScript would let us do that, but TypeScript says type object is not assignable to type string. And you may look at this and say, hey, we, uh, we didn't assign a type string to thing to watch, but we did implicitly. TypeScript has implicit types, so assigning this as the default value is the same as doing this. And so if we, for example, just let thing to watch be that, and then assigned an object, it would be fine. But if we explicitly defined a type, then this would no longer be a fine. And the same thing if we assign a default value, that's a string, then it will only accept a string. If we wanted to be able to assign both a string and an object, then we could do this. And we'll learn more about this sort of thing in a later video. I'm showing you this right now because when you first encounter the type system, it can seem very restrictive. And you may wonder if the trade-offs of preventing some errors are worth it. But we'll see in later videos that it's actually fairly flexible once you get to know it. So we have this OR for string and object, and it allows the string and the object to be assigned. But you'll notice now we have an issue here. Argument of type object is not assignable to parameter of type string. So concat is going to take a parameter of type string and not one of type object. And even though this can be a string or an object, TypeScript knows what we've assigned to it. So it will catch the error before we try to run it. So that's pretty cool. In JavaScript, then we'd have to wait until we ran the code and note that in this case, it would probably do a, you know, a two string on this. And we let's all watch object object today. And in other cases, it may be even worse because it'll throw a runtime error in JavaScript. So we've gone over two ways that TypeScript can save you. First is if you have a type assigned and you try to assign something that is not of that type to that variable, then it's going to show you an error. It's going to show you exactly where the error is. Second, if you have a set of types assigned and you know, the thing assigned is one of those types, but then you try to run something that does not take that type, then it'll throw an error there. So no error here when it's a string, but an error here when it's an object. So that's two ways that TypeScript can save you. We're going to expand on those in the upcoming videos. But I do want to show some ways where this saving breaks so you're not surprised. So first of all, you notice we're doing dot concat here. 
And that's because some of our other ways of doing this, they uh, are not going to actually catch the error because you can do a plus on an object. And similarly, this is not going to catch the error. So there are some shorthands that do not have as robust of error checking as calling the explicit concat. This is probably a bigger issue for strings than it is for anything else, because for a lot of things, we do typically call the explicit stuff like concat, rather than using a bunch of shorthands like we usually do for strings. The second way this breaks is in functions. So let's say we have a function of say something, and it wants a uh, thing, and then it returns this. So we will run the thing there, and then we will call say something with the thing to watch. And we'll go over all the details of this later and why it works the way it does. But for now, I just want you to notice how things are acting differently. So right now, it's not throwing any errors, even though it's going to be assigned an object. And then if we assign this parameter to be a string or an object, then it'll start throwing that error. And it's going to keep throwing that error, even if we're actually just sending it a string. The reason it does this is pretty simple to understand. So it's not just getting the one string here. It could be called any number of times. And so, although this call wouldn't result in error in JavaScript, this call would. And so it has to take into account both of those. If you've never seen a type system before, then this may be a lot to take in in one video. And I want to assure you that I don't expect you to completely understand what we've written here yet. We're going to go over all of this more in more detail in future videos. But I did want to give you a taste of some of the complexity available, as well as some of the ways that things could break, just in case you run out and start using TypeScript immediately. This is one of the most common ways that will work different than what we're going to show in the first video or two. Speaking of, I hope you'll join me in the next video where we're going to look at all of the basic types that are available in TypeScript with an emphasis on the ones that you'll be seeing most often in a view app. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Thanks to everyone who's a member of viewscreencast.com, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum plans, where you'll have access to our complete and up-to-date course catalog as well as coaching, mentoring, and consulting. Visit us at viewscreencast.com.